Welcome to the Philip on Science series of Science in the Pub talks. Today we're finding about how AI can be used to study humans falling over, or not. These events are part of my mission to get scientists out there and really doing something different, something that will cut through and break away from the educational model that has turned a lot of people off science communication. If you're interested in finding out more about that, check out the links to my website below. I've got an online training course coming soon. I may be doing a course near you. Get in contact if you want one. In this talk, Mariam Haramane from University of Canberra has done a great job, lots of visual humour and lots of connection points for us as an audience. Things that we can relate to, getting drunk, getting old, falling down. If you're interested in science communication, I'll break her talk down a bit more at the end of this video. But in the meantime, sit back and give a big round of applause for Mariam Haramane. Imagine you're at a bar and you're listening to presentations. Hooray! <laughs> and you're drinking. And drinking. Right. <laughs> and drinking. And drinking. Then at the end of the night, you stand up and you feel like, woo! <laughs> the whole world is moving. You feel like the ground under your feet is soft. You even try to walk a straight line, but you cannot. I tell you what, all the alcohol in your system has affected your balance. Now imagine there was a device you could put on yourself and measure your balance in terms of a number. Well, that's what I do. Better to say that's what I try to do. <laughs> Not exactly for drunk people, but for anyone with balance deficiencies. Hello everyone, my name is Mariam and I am a lecturer at the University of Canberra. My field of research is human motion analysis for rehabilitation purposes. So about 500 years ago, Galileo said, measure what is measurable, and if it's not measurable, make it measurable. So I would like to call myself a female Galileo in the field of human motion and balance. So when it comes to human motion, if it's measurable, I just measure it. If it's not measurable, I do my best to make it measurable. So, as I said, I look at human balance and motion, especially those with balance deficiencies. Could it be people with obesity, disabled people, older people, or injured athletes? Because all the balance assessment methods which are out there are either subjective, and the ones that are technology-based are huge, they're super complicated, and they're very expensive. So, What I try to do is to take the balance test for the subjective assessment and try to convert them into objective, quantifiable measurements. So what I do, I use different sensors. Could it be uh, inertial motion units or wearable sensors and force plates? And I record human motion while participants are doing different balance tests and using different methods of signal processing and machine learning, I'll try to analyze the data and I should do that one. And I try to develop objective quantifiable measurements for balance and motion. So this is me doing one of the experimental sessions at a Wollongong Hospital from about two years ago. I have this inner Galileo in me, and I try to measure everything which is related to human motion. So as you can see, using different sensors, I measure whatever I can measure in terms of acceleration, velocity, angular velocity of different parts of the body. So I measure whatever I can measure. But this data, which we call raw data, is not good enough, because based on this data, I cannot compare the performance of different participants with each other. So here comes the most important parts of my job. 
to understand which of these data is the best to use in my analysis and what method and what algorithm to use to analyze the data to be able to get meaningful information out of it. So when it comes to balanced assessment tests, I categorize them into two groups of static tests and dynamic tests. So the static tests are different standing tests, so in different positions. And what all researchers do in terms of analyzing these tests, they look at the sway analysis. In terms of, like for example, they look at sway area, sway displacement, uh, forward, backward, side to side, and different methods. But these sway um, measurements, they look at different aspects of sway. So again, that inner Galileo was not happy. And I thought, how about I include all these measurements and I include all the motion data that I get from every participant and using a specific machine learning method, I cluster them and I come up with one index, which I call sway index, and I could easily compare different participants in different standing tests. Then I have the dynamic test, which the list goes on. There are, as you can say, different functional tests, like pick up an object test, as you can see there. Again, when I conduct this test, I come up with huge amount of data. So again, it's my job to choose which data to um, include in my um, analysis and what method to use, what algorithm to use to be able to get meaningful information out of it. So as you can see, all that data that I got by using a specific machine learning algorithm, I was able to transform it into a string of alphabets. So how cool is that? Imagine you do a, a, a functional test, and I transform that into A, B, C, 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 D. So I can easily compare your performance with another person in terms of that um, string of alphabets. So the list goes on. There are different tests, such as functional reach test, or the five times C to stand test. In all these tests, again, it's my job to choose the best set of data and um, to choose the best algorithm to analyze them. So you might say, what good comes out of your research? So I can say my research, a lot of people benefit from my research. For example, I can help injured athletes to pinpoint the best time for their return to the field. Because it's very important and crucial for an injured athlete to get back into the field on time not too late and not too soon. And also, I can predict the risk of fall in um, older people with the help of my research, which is again crucial. Almost 30% of people above 65 fall each year. So with the help of this research, I can help older people to be able to <laughs> not exactly do that. <laughs> but at least they will be able to do this. They will be able to go out and about and enjoy their golden years. Thank you. So there you go, a lovely talk. I really loved how Mariam went to an effort to make some visual humor on her slides. She had excellent stage presence, really good with the microphone, good confidence uh, stature, and also lovely confident eye contact and great volume. Really lovely to hear. It's rare that you hear a scientist who really uh, blasted out like that, so that was great. She also threw up quite a lot of data, which, I th which is useful, I think, uh, for establishing credibility and showing the depths of her study. People can come back and ask her that later. She didn't really have time to, to cover it properly in eight minutes, but I think it was not a bad idea to put it up there. The video at the beginning showing her actually doing her work, that was nice as well. Uh, pity she cut it off a bit. Um, overall, the one thing that, uh, that was a bit of a missed opportunity, having done the work to put the visual humor in, some of them didn't quite land. And I want to tell you a joke here to illustrate that. Why can't scientists tell jokes timing? If she'd just left a bit more space, I think these uh, video jokes would have landed better. The images, the trick is you say the words, 
let the image appear afterwards. So there's a little moment where the audience is hanging. What do those words mean? Boom. If you put the image up first and then say the joke, it's kind of lost because humans are visual. They'll look at the image, they won't pay attention to the words. So great talk, Mariam. Thanks for being involved. If you're interested in working with me on science communication, check out the links below to training courses or come to a pub night and get up on stage. The best thing you can do, the number one thing you can do is practice. Give something a try and uh, you'll get better and better.